When I moved to Haven Springs, I hadn't seen my brother Gabe in years. Alex! <laughs> it's just so good to see you again. Welcome to Haven. This place is pretty sweet. I'm glad you two met. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a new Life is Strange game is coming our way, and I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks absolutely stunning. So I've watched the trailer, I've watched it again, and then I watched it a bunch more times. So naturally now I think I'm just about ready to talk about and theorize what Life is Strange True Colors is going to be all about. You're here. So first off, Life is Strange True Colors is being developed by Deck Nine, the same studio that made the frankly amazing Life is Strange Before the Storm. And it seems like Deck Nine started working on True Colors right after Before the Storm, as game director Zach Garris, returning from being lead writer for Before the Storm, confirmed in the stream it's been in development since 2017. I am so pleased that Deck Nine is returning to the series. I absolutely loved Before the Storm because it had such a warmth and an earnestness about it, plus all the kissing, that I can't wait to see what the team do with a new cast of characters and a new location that they've been able to build themselves from scratch. Oh, plus at least one familiar character that fans are going to be over the moon to see more of. Yeah, we definitely rolled a nat 20 on that one. You ever want to talk to me, Chloe? You know you can, right? So Life is Strange True Colors seems to return to the familiar LIS formula of a complex mystery unfolding in a small town, with a returning cast of characters. Our protagonist for True Colors is Alex Chen, an Asian American girl who has moved to the small town of Haven Springs to reunite with her brother Gabe after eight years apart. Exactly why they were estranged for so long is unclear right now, but it was mentioned during the livestream by her voice and motion capture actor Erica Mori that Alex had spent time in the foster care system for some years before the beginning of the game, so that may have something to do with it. Because of her past, says Mori, Alex has already faced difficulties in her life and has come out stronger and more resilient because of them. Gabe asks Alex to come to Haven Springs as a chance to start over and have the two reconnect after so long apart. So for Alex, it's supposed to be a fresh start and a chance to find a new place to call home. It seems though that it doesn't quite work out like that. Very soon after Alex arrives in Haven, maybe even less than 24 hours, Gabe is killed. We see some townspeople argue that Gabe's death was a tragic accident, while others are not so convinced. And Alex realizes that there's more to what happened than initially meets the eye. Here. In the stream, we see townspeople gathering together, saying things like, Haven's a community, we help each other, which on the surface seems nice, but could also be taken to mean that we should expect to see conspiracies and cover-ups wear their ugly heads too. Either way, this all seems to be setting up the central narrative thread of True Colors to be a murder mystery, which I am very happy about. Now for the supernatural element. Life is Strange True Colors seems to be all about empathy and how we connect with each other. And it turns out Alex can do that a little bit better than most. Her gift or curse as she believes it to be at the beginning of the game is that she can see people's emotions manifested as colorful auras emanating from their body. She's an empath, but with a twist. So for example, from everything that we've seen so far, it seems to be that a purple aura signifies fear, red signifies anger, blue means sadness, and yellow means joy. All corresponding pretty well with the characters from Inside Out, actually. Hmm. This power isn't a one-way thing, however. Alex can experience the emotions of people around her, but if those emotions are strong, they can overpower her own emotions and take control of her if she isn't careful, and seemingly cause physical disruptions to things around her. How will this manifest in gameplay? Like, will it, for example, close off more rational dialogue options? Will being exposed to more heightened conversation mean that your responses are shaped in kind? I can't wait to see how all this is reflected in the HUD. 
Also, was this power triggered by Alex finding out about Gabe's death? That sort of sharp emotional shock early on in the story would certainly tie in with the series precedent, with Max's reaction to Chloe's shooting or Daniel's response to his dad's death. With all of you. Alex also says that when she focuses, she can understand why a person is feeling a certain way. That's pretty vague though, and it's also imperfect, because here's what I find really interesting. Alex could be sensing an emotional response from a person, that can be misleading. Let's say, for example, someone is looking at a crime scene and she sees that they're feeling anger. But is that anger over something unspeakable happening to someone they loved? Or is it a lingering anger over something that caused them to hurt that person? I suspect Alex, and also the player, is going to get that wrong from time to time. And I can't wait to see how it plays out. Because, hey, you know who might be really good at hiding their emotions in a small town where everyone knows everyone? A murderer. So, yeah, suspect everyone. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Get that gun away from me, psycho! When you think about it, Alex's power is not that far removed from Max Caulfield's time rewind ability from the original Life is Strange, in that when used, it gives you an added layer of information that you can then apply to dialogue with other characters to give you the edge in getting a specific outcome from them. But unlike Max's power, where it could feel a little bit manipulative to simply replay conversations and use a person's previous responses to change their perception of you until you get the result that you want, here you are by definition engaging in someone's emotional state and adjusting your words according to how they feel in the moment. And there are no do-overs for that. We haven't met many of the other characters in True Colors just yet, but on her first day in town, Alex meets two new friends and potential love interests. There's Ryan, Gabe's best friend, and then there's also Steph Gingrich, D&D fanatic and openly queer Blackwell alum that players will remember from before the storm. It is so brilliant to see Steph return here, especially given how much fans loved her in BTS. Plus, her presence does give us a hint as to the timeline of True Colors, because she is visibly a little bit older than in BTS. So perhaps she moved here after graduating from Blackwell, before the events of the original Life is Strange game. Anyway, I am so excited to get to know Steph better, a lot better. Yes, she will absolutely be my romantic interest. Of course, there will be lots of kissing. I, yep, yeah, sorry, Ryan. Because of course, there is another potential romantic interest in Ryan, who was apparently Gabe's best friend. And all three, so that's Gabe, Ryan, and Steph, are shown a lot in a particular music store, the Rocky Mountain Record Traders. So it would kind of make sense if all three worked there, maybe Gabe owned it, and that Alex was set to take a job there before tragedy struck. It's super interesting that Deck Nine have hired the talented MXM Toon as Alex's singing voice. We heard her beautifully singing Creep by Radiohead in the stream, but you also might have caught a glimpse of Alex and Steph playing in a band together. So it looks like music is interwoven throughout the story. Additionally, we saw that Gabe gifted Alex a guitar as a welcome home present, so that's definitely gonna hold some emotional significance for her. As is always the way with Life is Strange games, the music plays a huge role, and that seems even more the case here. You can hear Cyrus Reynolds in some of the trailer music, as well as a song that, according to Shazam, is called Haven. Pretty fitting. It's by a Welsh artist called Novo Amor, and is apparently quite new. Could it be that Novo Amor is creating new music for True Colors in the same way that Daughter created new music for Before the Storm? Well, we'll find out. But as always, we know the music for True Colors will be beautifully chosen and emotionally devastating. Speaking of beautiful, the town of Haven Springs looks absolutely stunning. Lots of mountains, lakes, flowers. It looks idyllic, but definitely hides some very dark secrets. What's interesting is, during the stream, Zach Garris mentions that there will be plenty of opportunities to use your power as you freely explore the streets and spaces of Haven Springs. Now, that sounds a little bit like a hint towards an open world, 
or at least a world that is partially open. Which would make sense. It feels like Alex is maybe a little bit older than the previous high school aged LIS protagonists. Well, she and Steph are at least 21 years old as we see them hanging out in a bar. And so they would be freer to wander around Haven to get to the bottom of what happened to Alex's brother. And what a treat that town is going to be to explore. Not only does the town look great, but so do the people, as they've been rendered with full motion-captured performances in-house at Deck 9 for the first time in the series. It's not just there the true colours look next-gen, though. There was a moment when Alex was playing the guitar in the stream that her eyes just looked so sparkly and full of life that it really showed visually how far the series has come, in my opinion. What happened to Gabe was a senseless, tragic accident. It wasn't an accident. And of course, in the same announcement that we find out the name of the next Life is Strange game, we also get a release date. The full game launches on the 10th of September, because with Life is Strange True Colors, the series leaves its episodic release structure behind and gives us everything at the same time. As MXM Tune noted in the stream though, it will still be divided by chapter breaks, so I'm hoping it won't lose those cliffhanger moments that kept us on the edge of our seats after each installment of the previous series entries. I'm happy that we're getting to experience everything all at once though. The delays that plagued LIS 2, though no one's fault, felt like they kind of killed some of its momentum. I wonder if Deck 9 were ever tempted to have everything completed but still stagger the chapters slightly, kind of like what Don't Nod did with Tell Me Why. I think it was a good balance between not keeping people waiting too long but still prolonging the mystery and intrigue. Either way though, I'm really excited to be able to experience everything all at once, even though I know I'll probably need those chapter selects to just <sighs> calm down after each very exciting moment. What's going to happen now? No fucking idea. But one thing I'm sure of, it all began when I met her. Also, I am so happy to see a remastered collection of Life is Strange 1 and Life is Strange Before the Storm will be available, first packaged along with the True Colors Ultimate Edition and later on as a standalone buy. All of the artwork is just so stunning that I might cry. Can we have it all framed, please, Deck 9? Please? Anyway, can you tell I'm excited? I genuinely do think that this new entry looks absolutely stunning. I can't wait to get to know Alex and her powers. I can't wait to explore Haven. Steph is back. There's a hot dog man t-shirt. There's a firewalk poster. And it's an intriguing central mystery and power that has the potential to take the story on some fascinating twists and turns. I didn't realize that we all knew you were coming for the first time in years. Well, what do you think? I love it. I really let myself believe. Welcome home. I don't know what to believe now. <sighs> so, what do you think? I am dying to know, so please put your theories in the comments below. And yeah, let us know if we should maybe do a Let's Play? I mean, yes, okay. There's definitely gonna be a Let's Play. You know why? Because there's gonna be kissing. So much kissing. Because I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? Well, I'm, actually, I'm waiting for you to click on one of the videos above and um, watch one of those. So, you know, you could click on this one. Or, um, this one? Maybe? I'm gonna watch you until you do it. Go on. Go on. You know you want to.